I was talking with someone the other day about contactors and they were replacing a single pole contactor with a two pole contactor and we got on the, the topic of, of what matters and when it matters and, and what do you need to know to replace a contactor. So um, I told them, you know, for me when I diagnose a bad contactor there's three things that I need to know. I need to know the coil voltage because they're not always 24 volts so it matters. You got to know the coil voltage. You need to know how many poles or how many switches are on your contactor and you need to know the amp rating that that switch is rated to handle because if you put too small of an amperage rating on there uh, the contacts are going to basically weld shut over time. So those three things for your contactor replacement are very crucial. Coal voltage, how many poles does it have and what the amp rating of that pole is. So that aside, it led into um, another topic, can I replace a two pole with a single pole or vice versa? And I got to thinking and there's really one situation where I came up with in your residential, um, your residential calls there where it really matters and that's on a crankcase heater. Other than that, I don't know that it truly matters because one switch is enough to break the circuit and stop anything from working. So uh, I informed the person that's my opinion and um, like I said, it, it led into this because when you replace a contactor on a unit that has a crankcase heater around the compressor, it does matter. It has to be a single pole contactor. So that's what I'm gonna look at today and try to talk to you just a little bit about. So I have here a crankcase heater, um, little belly band looking thing. It's got uh, two high voltage wires here, it's got a green for ground safety. Uh, but this, this little band attaches to the bottom of some of your manufacturer's compressors. It's not on every compressor, it's not on heat pumps alone, it's not on straight ACs alone. Um, it's kind of a, a grab bag on where you'll find it, but if you see this, uh, and they're not all like this. This one has a solid band. Uh, it's got some information on its ratings on the inside. I'll, I'll try to throw up a little picture real quick on that. Um, the one that I have on the unit that we're gonna work on today is, uh, it kind of looks like a zipper. So it's got little slots every now and then. And like I said, it looks like zippers or some braces or whatnot. But it, it's, it's just a small little heat strip. Uh, much like you might find in a coffee pot or an iron or something like that. Uh, maybe even uh, your door heaters for your refrigeration boxes. So very small wattage, uh, but it's just enough heat in our case to keep liquid refrigerant from settling below the oil in the compressor. So this runs, in the case of a single pole contactor, um, our, our system here has nothing other than the contactor controlling it you can find some situations where there's actually a temperature switch um, you know, wired in series to one of your legs of power for this crankcase heater, uh, and that temperature switch will you know, open and close based on the weather, of course, and turn that heater on or turn it off. In most situations where I've seen, it's usually controlled by a single pole contactor, and that's it. And that's enough, you know, real simple and, and basic, and, and that's it. So. Um, we're gonna go out in the shop and look at a crankcase heater and how it's set up. Because it is an electrical load, uh, first we're gonna treat it like that. You can, it's, it's got voltage, it draws amps, uh, and it has resistance. So we'll, we'll look at a couple formulas and see if we can't play with the numbers and just kind of keep that fresh in your head. Um, but it is an electrical load. Not a very big one, but it's there. We're also gonna talk about how it back feeds through the circuit if you only have a single pole contactor that's controlling your crankcase heater. So there was somebody uh, not too long ago that commented on back feeding circuits and what that means to me and back feeding is back feeding. It's, it's basically drawing power from a, a source or a, a path that's not normal. Um, it's just electrically gonna let it work. So we're gonna look at how this crankcase heater does this as we are hooked up to a single pole contactor. So that being said, we'll keep it as short as possible and we'll go out there on the unit. All right, so here is our crankcase heater right here. Um, like I said, you can look at it and see it's kind of like brace looking or zipper looking. It's not completely solid like the one I had earlier. 
um, but it still has information on it. This thing is rated for 240 volts and it's 40 watts. So like I said, very, very small uh, little, little heater, but just enough. And if we follow it back, you're gonna see it goes up into this split tubing, uh, much like they use on cars and stuff, uh, just for protection, right? So it's gonna go up, it's gonna go through all this bunch of wiring here for the uh, blower section of this package unit. And it's gonna wind up going back over here to the contactor. All right, so as we follow it back, what you'll see is my power comes is coming in here uh, from my my power source over here and, and my panel box. So I've got my inlet side of the contactor and I've got my outlet side of the contactor. And if you look, the one side of this heater, uh, cause I've already traced them back of course, but one side of the heater plugs into the bottom on the inlet of this single pole. And the other side is right here and it plugs into the outlet. So that'd be basically like the L1 side as you'll sometimes see and then the T1 side, if your contactor is labeled like that. So the line side and the load side of the switch. But it's on the same switch, or it's on the same side of power. One's going here on the inlet, one to the outlet of the switch, but essentially the same side, L1. L2 would be the other side. So um, it is an electrical load. So what I'm gonna do is uh, the information printed on the band itself the crankcase heater is going to give us wattage and voltage so we can use watts law and figure out that a 40 watt heater at 240 volts should pull a certain amount of amps okay um, we can also use ohms law if i know the voltage and the amps i can get the ohms so you treat it like a load and you use the basic electrical stuff that you know and you can figure this thing out so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to ohm out this heater just to see if it's a good load. So I've got, I've got some alligator clips attached to my leads and I'm gonna clip one here and one here. 1.454 kilo ohms. So on this screen, because there's only you know, room for so many, um, so many digits, instead of using commas, they start using decimals and changing the reading uh, the range it is. So basically this is kilo ohms. So we're looking at um, a reading with three digits after that decimal, thousands basically. So this, in, the, in our case, we can replace this decimal with a comma. So this is like 1,454 ohms. Which means it's a good load, electrically sound. So I'm gonna plug this back I'm gonna wind this through uh, all these wirings here. I'm gonna plug one to the bottom. And one to the top. And now she's back in there. So if we come over here. So of course, uh, like I said, we can use Watt's Law. Wattage is equal to volts times amps. So I know that a 40 watt heater if I give it 240 volts, it should pull a certain amount of amps. And I know that if I, this is the HVAC version of Ohm's law, right? Voltage is equal to amps times resistance. If I know how many amps and I know the resistance, right? I can calculate the voltage or if I know the voltage and the resistance, I can calculate amperage. So um, I'm gonna kind of double, double duty this thing, right? With the wattage and the Ohm's law. I know that my, resistance is 1.454 kilo ohms and I'm gonna get my voltage here in a minute and we're gonna do the math problem and see how many amps it should take um, but if I just did this 40 watts um, uh, on the watts law if I take 40 and divide it by 240 what we'll wind up with is an amperage uh, reading so if I do that and I got my old school calculator off to the side. I get a point, so it, this should be somewhere around 0 0.16 amps, all right? Um, we'll, we'll verify that. The thing about crankcase heaters is, the more voltage you put on, the more wattage you get out because of the formula. I don't have 240, I've got 208. So we'll see if this amperage is gonna change. It probably will, which means I'll get less wattage out of this. 
All right, I got some guys in the back beating on some sheet metal, so hopefully it ain't too much background noise. So right now the unit's off. So the compressor's not running. Uh, I've got the thermostat set to off, no fan, no anything. But if I look right here, I'm gonna use my UEI with the, uh, with the little amp hook. Turn my light on, maybe it'll, I'm gonna grab this crankcase heater lead. And what you'll see when I put it in those crosshairs, 0.14 amps, all right? 0.14 amps. Well, that's pretty close to what we calculated with the wattage and the voltage from earlier using the Watts Law formula. So uh, I know my heater's running, all right? 0 0.14, 0 0.15 amps, depending on how tight you pull it in here. If I feel down here, that heater is not hot, it's warm, and the longer it runs, of course, the warmer it's gonna get. But that heater is warming that steel shell of this compressor up, and it's keeping that liquid refrigerant from staying liquid it's gonna give it enough heat that any liquid that is trapped underneath your oil is gonna rise up and go through and you know be pumped through the system. Uh, just like water on a road, you know, when it starts to rain, that real light drizzle, um, oil and the density, uh, it will be lifted up and something can get underneath. We don't want liquid underneath there, uh, liquid refrigerant. We want oil, okay? That's what lubricates the bearings, keeps it going the whole nine, okay? So the heater's running, but how is it getting this power if the contactor's not closed? Look at this. If I grab right here, this is the run winding wire going back to the contactor, right? Uh, got a little plug right here that you know snaps into the scroll. If I grab this run winding wire, pull it tight, 0.15 amps. The compressor's not running. The crankcase heater's the one that's running with this 0.15. If that compressor was running, you'd have three, four, five, you know, eight amps, uh, whatever. You know, it'd be a much bigger number, not a not a portion of one amp like we have here. So this heater, right, if we follow it, uh, matter of fact, here we go. If we follow it, what you're gonna see, right? So we know it starts over here, bottom of the contactor. The switch is open, right? There we go. So at the bottom of the contactor where this crankcase heater wire is, that's always voltage there anytime the power's on, right? So I can't go through the switch and I'm not going to the other side of power because that's going to, you know, uh, going to be a boom, right? Breaker's going to trip. We got electrical short. But this L1 power here goes this way through the crankcase heater wire, through the blower compartment, down this uh, split tubing, goes into my heater. So I've got power. I've got my load. If I give it the other side of power, right, which is what it's going to try to do, it's going to backtrack through here and it's going to hit the top of this contactor. But that's the same leg of power. So how's it gonna work? It can't, right? Unless, right, the more stuff you have wired in together, the more it matters. Because it'll hit this black wire here, which is going um, from the common terminal on the compressor back to uh, your contactor. It's gonna run that black wire back to this common terminal. And once it gets in there, it's got two windings to choose from. Well, electricity with loads in series, I've got one load, the crankcase heater, and this is going to be another load, we'll say. Um, it's going to use the path of least resistance. So it's going to go through this run winding versus the start. And that's why we had amps on here because, and look what color it is, right? It's going to go through into the common terminal. It's going to go the run winding, all loop-de-loop -loop roundabout, and it's going to come back out this yellow, back through the blower compartment, back over here to the contactor, and now, it's got that straight shunt side to the other side of power. That's back feeding. That crankcase heater is back feeding through my compressor terminal and circuits, um, you know, the windings of the motor to get its other side of power. All right, watch this though. What if, there we go. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my 0.16 amps right here. We good? Let me tilt it down just a second, right? So I've got my 0.15 amps on my um, on my crankcase heater, and it's going to move a little bit because I'm moving, right? What if I unplug the compressor? That's something to think about. Bam! I just took away its back feeding circuit. Is it still running? You bet it is. Look at that. 0.14 amps, 0.15 amps. If I hold it right. So how is it doing it now? I just unplugged the circuit that it was attached to. <laughs> you thought you did, right? Electricity is real funny.
come over here and look at your compressor. What else besides the compressor, or uh, excuse me, look at the contactor, right? What else besides the compressor is attached to that contactor? Okay, enough guessing, right? It's your outdoor fan motor. The outdoor fan motor is the other black wire back there. And it's got a run and a start and a common terminal on the motor, and it's got two windings, the run and the start and the whole nine, right? If I were to grab, I'm only gonna do this once, right? If I were to get the wires up under here for the fan, so I've got a brown, all right, get you in here. I got this brown wire off the capacitor, right? That's on the fan side, and I've got this yellow, and I've got this other black one. If I were to grab, see if I get the right one. Oh, man. I, I got the common wire for the outdoor fan motor, and look what it's doing, right? I got like 0.12 amps or so. That's because when you unplug that compressor, electricity let it go through the fan motor, the outdoor fan motor, the condenser fan motor, whatever you want to call it. Um, because it had no no choice if it wanted to run which it does and electrically there's no switch stopping it from running so it's uh, it needed to run it's just now it's back feeding through the outdoor fan motor instead of your compressor here as soon as I plug in right as soon as I plug in this if you've if you've ever owned out your condenser fan motor it's much higher ohm readings than your compressor usually these are only one two three you know very very small ohms you get into a couple hundred maybe even some kilo ohms for your outdoor fan motor so if given a choice between the compressor and the outdoor fan motor uh, to use that back feeding circuit through your windings it's going to use the compressor but if you disengage the compressor in, in this example here just understand how the electricity is working it has no choice but to use the outside fan motor so I'm going to hold this amps uh, all right so I got zero, zero amps, all right? And I'm gonna plug it in and, and instantly, 0.15 amps. If you give that circuit a choice, it's gonna use the one, right? The least resistance, which is our compressor. So uh, just a little, uh, little fun with the back feeding circuits or whatnot. Um, one other thing I'll do, I'll show you this. I'm gonna turn this unit off and on just to let you see that that switch, you'll hear the compressor running. Um, but you'll see how fast, once that, once that single pole switch closes, this, uh, this crankcase heater will cut off. So let me go around here and I will turn on the compressor. All right, I got the, oh man. Look at that. Zero amps. I don't know if you saw that or not. I'm trying to get the glare above me off. So, zero amps on the crankcase heater while the compressor is running. Because the switch closed, and once that single pole switch closes, the heater is on the same leg of power. You can't run it L1 going in, L1 coming out. It doesn't work that way. We need the other side of power. So, I'm going to turn, uh, turn the compressor off now. See if I can't do it right. Zero amps. As soon as the compressor goes off, it should read. There we go, 0.12. I'm not holding it quite right, 0 0.13, 0 0.14. So anyway, just a few minutes about that. I hope this made a little bit of sense to you. Uh, like I said, we were talking about back feeding circuits, single pole versus two pole contactors, how electricity is funny and how it works. So. Um, yeah, that's about it for this one. Appreciate you.